darkness, the absence of light. Where there is no light, no life in this world is conceivable. The sun, source of energy and center of our solar system. It has been worshiped by countless peoples for millennia. It has been elevated to the status of a god because of its light and life-giving energy. For centuries, people have known that they need the sun in order to live. Some visionaries realized early on that light would one day become one of man's most important tools. For four decades now, that vision has been turned into a daily reality. A beam of light needs 8 minutes and 19 seconds to reach the Earth from the sun. In 8 minutes and 19 seconds, that ray of sunshine will have arrived on the Earth. At a speed of almost 300,000 kilometers a second, it transports energy in the form of light. The characteristics of light have fired the imaginations of scientists in this century and the last. Science's exploration of light finally led to the invention of the laser and to the laser's success in almost all sectors of technology and modern life. The man who paved the way was Albert Einstein. As early as 1917, Einstein described the basic principles of stimulated emission, which would lead to the invention of the laser. By pure logic, Einstein proposed that there had to be an until then unknown type of light emission that would allow us to control the characteristics of light to a degree that was not dreamt possible before. In 1917, Einstein was the director of the renowned Kaiser Wilhelm Institute of Physics in Berlin. The whole of Europe was in the final throes of a devastating world war. Four years later, in 1921, he was awarded the Nobel Prize for Physics for his groundbreaking theories about light. At that time, a young boy in Greenville in far-off South Carolina was just six years old. His name? Charles Hard Towns. One day, Towns would study physics, and his fundamental work in the field of quantum electronics enabled the construction of the very first masers and lasers. It was the American Towns, as well as the Russians Basov and Prokhorov, from the Lebedev Institute in Moscow, who thought Einstein's ideas through to the end. 43 years after Einstein, in 1964, they received the Nobel Prize for their work. Four years before that, the world had already seen the amazing invention based on these theoretical principles. 1960. At the Olympic Games in Rome, Armin Hari wins the gold medal in the 100 meters sprint and is the first man to cover that distance in 10 seconds, a speed which most people considered inconceivable. And the speed of light was far beyond imagination. The amazing properties of light attracted scientists all over the world, one of them being Theodore Maiman. The same year that Armin Hari won that gold medal in Rome, young scientist Theodore Maiman presented experts the first laser ever. People still did not quite know what Maiman's new invention could be used for. An invention searching for an application was the scornful opinion, even in the technical press. They couldn't have been more wrong. The laser was a groundbreaking technology that would find applications in every sector of modern life and activity. It was an invention that triggered innovations itself. The laser began an unstoppable campaign of victory from the moment it left Maiman's laboratory. But what is this instrument that had so amazed the experts? How does it work, this strange device that had fired the imaginations of scientists for decades? Let us take a close look at the source of this unusual radiation by going inside a laser. The word laser is an acronym derived from the basic principle underlying this instrument. Light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. Like other light sources, the laser also transforms energy into light. In this so-called solid-state laser, similar to Maiman's first laser, a crystal is fed with energy in the form of light. This is referred to as optical pumping. The pump light can excite certain particles in the lasing medium, 
That means charge them with energy. After a short period, the excited particles spontaneously emit their energy by sending out a new individual quantum of light in any direction. This process of particle excitation and spontaneous emission of light takes place everywhere. The light of a light bulb and of the sun is also produced by the excitation of particles and subsequent spontaneous emission of light. The laser effect, on the other hand, can only occur when in special materials, called lasing media, high pumping leads to a state where almost all particles are excited. This condition is referred to as population inversion and normally does not occur in nature. In that state, it is much more likely for an excited particle to be hit by a previously emitted light quantum of another particle than spontaneously sending out its light before being hit. The incoming light quantum now does something very amazing. It stimulates the emission of a second identical light quantum. Identical in this context means that they have the exact same direction and that the waves of the new and the incoming light quantum are synchronized. This process is thus referred to as stimulated emission. The lasing media is located between two mirrors to repeatedly reflect the light quantums back into the lasing media. The light is thus intensified into a veritable avalanche. To utilize the laser radiation, one of the mirrors is only partially reflecting so that a part of the laser light can emerge. The laser creates radiation of the highest quality, which does not otherwise occur in nature. The laser light is one colored. It can be very well focused and can propagate as a single beam almost infinitely in parallel. New types of lasers soon appeared with various kinds of lasing media, such as gas, solid state, liquid or plasma. Over the years, the machines became more compact, more sturdy and more efficient and were used in almost every sector of science, material processing and medical technology. Even today's entertainment and communications electronics would be unthinkable without the laser. An invention searching for an application was what people laughingly called it at first. But the truth was that the laser was the technology everyone had long been waiting for in almost every sector of today's modern world. Virtually everywhere, in fact. Today, lasers are used daily in thousands of different applications. Our modern world would be unthinkable without the laser, and every day it penetrates new spheres of application. But what will the future bring? Where is the development of the laser actually headed? Development of the laser has not stopped yet. In fact, it is still very much in its infancy. The speed of development is comparable to that of the computer, Scientists all over the world are continually making lasers even smaller and more efficient, and of course, more cost-effective as well. It is now clear that lasers will be entering many more areas of everyday life, and they are becoming easier to handle all the time. The speed of innovation is breathtaking. Nowadays, the latest generation of lasers, so-called high-power diode lasers, are not much bigger than a matchbox, but they deliver the same power of several kilowatts as the first lasers used in material processing which once filled up entire rooms. 
Much has changed since the first laser was presented to the public in 1960, but most of it still rests on the work done by Einstein, Towns, and Maynard. People's fascination for the instrument and for light as a tool is unbroken, and the laser still has a long future ahead of it. In a few seconds, the beam of light will have reached the Earth, a ray of light carrying particles known as photons. The 20th century was characterized by the electron, from electricity all the way to electronics. The 21st century will be the century of the photon, and the laser is the key to this far-reaching development.